hello guys my name is Vijay and welcome back to my youtube channel this is a third video in spark series and today we are going to dive into the fascinating world of Hadoop distributed file system commonly known as HDFS understanding HDFS architecture will give you an idea how master slave architecture works in distributed system but nowadays since many of the projects are moving towards cloud where we have more robust storage system like AWS S3, Azure storage account and many more but still understanding HDFS will lay a foundation for how distributed system works and still most of the projects are using HDFS so let's discuss that in this video. So before we get started with HDFS let's discuss the concept of master slave architecture as it forms the foundation for understanding HDFS. So a master slave architecture is a common design pattern used in distributed systems to manage and control multiple devices or processes. In this architecture there is one central device or process known as master which act as a control unit and then we have slaves which are the subordinate devices or processes that takes instruction from master and perform a specific task. So here in this example you can see that I have this master node which sends instruction to slave node to perform some task and also slave report back the process of their task to master node. So this is how master slave architecture looks like. Okay so HDFS as you already know is a storage system for distributed data storage and it is designed to store massive amount of data across multiple nodes in a distributed manner. So in the con context of HDFS the mas master slave architecture plays a crucial role. The HDFS architecture comprises two main components as you see here the name node which is a master here and data nodes which are slaves here. The master node handles various administrative tasks while the slave nodes are responsible for data storage. So name node along with data nodes forms HDFS cluster and name node basically stores the metadata about the files and directories in the HDFS cluster including the file to block mapping and the location of data nodes holding the data blocks because when a file is written to HDFS it is split into fixed size blocks typically 128 MB or 256 MB of size and each block is replicated across multiple data nodes and this replication factor which determines the number of copies for each block is configurable so you can change the replication factor in HDFS hyphen site.xml which is a con configuration file and the default value for replication factor is 3. So this means that each block is stored on three different data nodes and this data replication provides fault tolerance and high availability because if a data node or even a few data nodes fail the system can still access the data from the remaining replicas ensuring data integrity and continuous operations. So metadata related to these files blocks and folders which we are going to save in HDFS are going to be stored in name node and uh, name node maintains this information in two main files that are FS image and edit logs. The FS image is a file that represents a snapshot of the HDFS file systems metadata at a particular point in time which name node maintains. It contains all the information about the file and the directory structures, block information, replication factor and other essential metadata. And FS image is static and read only meaning it does not change during the normal operation of name node and it is created and updated only during a specific event such as name node restart, cluster startup or explicit manual operations like checkpointing. We'll talk about checkpointing in few minutes. Then we have edit logs also known as a transaction logs that is a sequential record of all the modifications made to the HDFS since the last FS image checkpoint. So when name node handles read and write requests it continuously update its metadata such as creating, renaming or deleting files and directories all those information in edit logs not in FS image. 
okay so fs image allows the name node to quickly recover its state during startup by loading the file systems metadata from the latest checkpoint that is the latest fs image and without fs image the name node would need to reprocess the edit logs entirely which could be time consuming correct and it will impact the cluster recovery time so instead of directly modifying the fs image uh, these changes are first written to the edit logs in an append only manner so edit logs are relatively smaller in size and can grow continuously as more operations are performed in hdfs then we have one more component in this architecture which is secondary name node that downloads the edit logs from the primary name node and merges them with the current fs image to create a new fs image checkpoint so this process we call it as a checkpointing so secondary name node is not a backup node for the primary node instead it assists the primary node by periodically checkpointing its metadata okay so fs image and edit logs are merged into one by secondary name node during checkpointing and whatever changes in hdfs happens it gets stored in new edit logs and then in next checkpointing it merged into the previous fs image and so on and this process continues so these two files that is fs image and edit logs play a crucial role in hdfs which maintains metadata about files okay now let's see what happens when we copy a file to hdfs and we can copy a file into hdfs through number of ways like through hdfs cli hdfs web ui and then through hdfs apis as well okay so when a client wants to copy data into hdfs client first sends a request to the name node and this request contains information about the source data and the target location in hdfs where the data needs to be copied then name node which act as a central metadata repository for hdfs it receives the client request and verifies whether the target location in hdfs is valid or not and has enough space to accommodate the data being copied after this verification the name node calculates how to divide the data into blocks and determines which data node will store those blocks so this name nodes blocks allocation strategy is essential for achieving data distribution reliability and fault tolerance okay then the name node respond to the client with the list of data node where the data block should be copied and these data nodes are selected based on the hdfs replication factor and their availability within the cluster then the client start copying the data to the data node directly it does not go through the name node for the actual data transfer instead it interacts with the data node that were specified by the name node directly okay and as the client copies each block to the data node the data node replicates the block to other data nodes according to the hdfs replication factor so suppose if we have a replication factor of 3 and when a block is copied to one data node then that particular data node takes the responsibility to create other two replicas in different data node this ensures data redundancy and fault tolerance so if data node fails the data remains accessible from other replicas so once the data is successfully copied to the required data node the client sends an acknowledgement to the name node indicating that the data copying process is complete upon receiving the acknowledgement the name node updates its metadata to indicate information about the new files location data blocks and their respective data nodes this ensures that the file is now part of hdfs file system and can be accessed by other clients for reading or processing so now let's see how reads happen in hdfs so client sends a request to name node asking for the data it needs to read and the file location in hdfs and the name node being the central metadata repositories knows where the data blocks are stored and which data nodes hold those blocks 
So it responds to client with the necessary information and upon receiving this information the client directly communicates with the data node that holds the required data blocks and it does not have to go through name node for data retrieval which enhances reading performance. So let's say the file is divided into multiple blocks as it usually the case in HDFS and client can request these blocks from the respective data nodes in parallel that allows for faster data retrieval because HDFS excels at parallel data retrieval meaning it can fetch data from multiple data nodes simultaneously. So this feature greatly speeds up the reading process especially when dealing with large files. So by reading data in parallel from multiple data nodes the client can take advantage of the distributed architecture of HDFS leveraging the combined bandwidth of the multiple machines. Once the client has obtained all the required data blocks from the data node, it assembles them back into the complete file. So this is how read happens. Now you have got a solid understanding about HDFS architecture, how it works and what are the key components, how read and write happens in HDFS. So I hope you found this video insightful and if you have any doubt, you can put your doubt into comment section. So let's stop here and meet in another video with some more content on Spark. Okay guys, so stay tuned and keep learning. Goodbye.